no one to play with? There's always PartyPoker.com where the world plays poker. You folded? We were poker crazy last week in the PartyPoker.com European Open. Two players out in four hands. And it was Ian Fraser, fresh from a recent half mil win, who took a seat in the semifinal. This is one great game, this poker. Good evening, I'm Jesse May here for the PartyPoker.com European Open and talking to actor and poker man of the hour, Michael Greco. Now, Michael, a lot of people watching this poker on TV trying to pick up tips, and we've sort of put together five top tips to improve your poker game, especially on these one-table tournaments. The first tip, know your opponents and pay attention. That's important. Knowing your opponent is so important because you've got different categories of your opponent. You've got a, a rock, you've got a, a very aggressive player, You've got a calling station, you've got all these different types of people. And especially if you've never played with them before, you've got to be focused and you've got to watch what they're doing, what their body language is doing, how they put their chips in, how they talk, how they raise, everything. Because you're going to be up against them at some point. And you, you need to have different sort of game plans for each different kind of player, for I guess. For every different kind of player, you've got to have a game plan. Can you bully them out of a pot? Can you bluff them? Will they call you? You can't sit around and start reading a, a magazine that you've got nearby. A lot of people wear sunglasses, and I, I tend to be a fan only because I like to watch what's going on. And I, the only reason I wear sunglasses is I don't like to see them watching, <laughs> right. me watching them. Yeah, the watcher is watching you. That's so right. pay attention. That's a top tip. Another one, know your own strengths and weaknesses. Is that important? Know your own strengths and weaknesses. I know my, one of my weaknesses is that uh, I tend to think that I'm always beaten with a better hand. So know your strengths. Know that um, you're... You, your check raising. A lot of people like to check raise with nothing. They know if they can't win the pot, they're going to check raise. Yeah, um, I mean, I have my own personal weakness. I, I play bad, but I mean, you, <laughs> you, have, you have to obviously know yourself when you're at the table. A, a third tip we have is know when to fold them. Know when to fold them. And I think the sign of a good player is knowing when his aces are beaten, when they're cracked. Knowing when his hand is completely done because you can, you can lose so many chips with your aces and you've got two callers and, and someone re-raises you on the flop. You've got to know when to put your aces down. That's a, very, that's a good sign of a good player. Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of players are looking to win the big pots, but not losing the pots and, and, and folding your hand when you're beat, obviously. That's, exactly. I mean, the, the best situation for aces is to be heads up, for example, you know, because then it, it, you've got more chance of, of beating your opponent. But when it gets to two, three, four players you're against, you know, you, the chances of you winning your aces become slim. Okay, a fourth tip we have is sort of from the Mad Marty school, ask the question. You've got to ask the question. You've got to, as I go back to the check, raise. If someone's made a bet and you've got to ask the question, I'm going to re-raise them. If they come over the top of you, then maybe you think you've lost. Especially pre-flop. If you're raising and someone re-raises you, you know they've got some kind of a hand unless they're bluffing. If you re-raise them back and they go all in, you've asked the question. Those kind of circumstances. Right, so sometimes you get more information by raising than by just calling. Exactly, and you can lose the minimum then rather than going down to the river where you could be out completely. Okay, last tip about the free card. A big no-no giving players a free card. I never give a free card, ever. I want to win the pot there and then. I'd rather win the few thousand that are in the pot there, take it home, rather than giving them a free card. They hit their three outer and then you lose all your money. Never give a player a free card unless you have the virtual absolute nuts. So there's five top tips, but we've got one more. This comes courtesy of former world champion Phil Helmuth. You want to get to the top? Listen to Phil. This is such a beautiful tip that I'm going to have to charge you to learn it. So I'm going to assume that the check's in the mail from you guys at home. When you make a bluff and you get caught making that bluff, sit back in your chair and remember exactly how you put the chips into the pot. Remember exactly where your hands were on your face, if anywhere. Remember if you were leaning backwards or forwards. And sometime in the next half an hour when you pick up a powerful hand, bet it exactly the same way. What it does is it sends signals to your opponents that you're bluffing. They can't help themselves. They're trusting their own abilities. You get to trick them. So when you have that strong hand, 
Make sure you bet it exactly as you did when you bluffed earlier. That's going to screw up their instincts. They're going to say, he's bluffing, he's bluffing, he's bluffing. They're going to call you and you're going to say, I got it. Thanks for the chips. Well, that was worth the money, but it's a good point Phil made there, Michael. That's a very good point. What, when you've made a, a hell of a great hand and, and the way you bet, try and recreate that when you're trying to bluff someone, and they're going to find it very difficult to call you. We're going to see some bluffs tonight, and plenty of them will get caught out. Let's see who's playing and who is sitting where. And the great schism about to get underway. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. No one to play with? There's always PartyPoker.com. Well, the cards are slide and everything is ready to go. Michael Greco and myself will be guiding you through. It's a rare pleasure tonight with this talent on the table. Let's get over to the action. In the, in the final in Paris, the power went in the whole of the The blinds are one in 2,000. There's 100,000 in chips like per player, minutes. putting 600,000 on the table. And in this lineup, we have at least half of the field has played in this format before, Yanni Sointula bit of experience and success here. Taxi Dave, trouble Pass. with the cards, but he wants Pass. to fold around to the button here. And uh, will the judge start things off? Pass. Yeah. Can play it very conservatively. Cool. Cool. Just the small and the big blinds. No way. Let's see a flop <laughs> straight away. Warren Mason with the king That's deuce. Uh, from Wolverhampton, Warren, and uh, oh, Roland's got a better hand. He uh, is part of that Midlands crowd, and uh, I know he counts. Some people like Mad Marty. Check. Uh, check, check, check. His mentors. And uh, they both flop top pair here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's got all elements of a split pot here, hasn't it? Unless they hit their kicker. Check, check, it's check, check, check. check. And uh, <laughs> look how slow they're both playing. What's this about, Michael? I don't know. They both got top pair. Do they not want this pot? Slow played to oblivion. They now have both have the same hand. Same Neither hand, kicker yeah. plays. No. Cool. 5,000. Cool. And narrow. And Roland the Wolf just check, check, checked, and then called Wazo down, and they've both got the same hand. That was that pot could have been a lot bigger. What uh, do you think, Roland? Uh, just did not know where uh, Wazo was at. Wants to ease in slowly here. I, I suppose they're all, they're both worried about oh, yeah. their kicker. But you've got to remember, there's only six players here, so the you know the probability of the other one having the king is is reduced uh, somewhat. So. Yeah, I'm quite surprised at least one of them didn't take the initiative and uh, and went all out on the attack. But, uh, yeah, the, the pot could have been a, a hell of a lot bigger. <coughs> Joint first with, for Roland DeWolf. He's actually tied with the entire rest of the table. <laughs> but uh, I've seen uh, Roland play a couple times on television recently, and uh, he has been very, very dangerous, very good player, Roland. Uh, he's uh, sort of just rocketed into the poker progeny with that big win in Paris. Uh, the WPT win, and since then, uh, he's made a big name for himself. Well, that's incredible how when you win one big event, Jesse, especially half a million euros, it gives you so much confidence to play in other events, purely because you've got the money. Oh, Dave, you put the cards the wrong way around, mate. Pass. That's it. Well done. I think the king eight there was something he folded. Raised to 6,000 total. Dave, and a triple the bet from Niall Callahan, who Pass. has clearly come to play. The two Pass. sixes, getting respect around to the table. And uh, this hand over, unless Yanni Sointula decides to play, he doesn't. I think, obviously, I, I don't think any of these players have played with each other before. Maybe Roland and Yanni, but uh, um, I think just getting to know each other's games, just sussing. While the blinds are still low, Jesse, it's good to just suss each other out. See if you can